And so with my coaching clients, I would often say, hey, let, let's just stop for a moment before we dive into this coaching over the next several months. And I want you to assess these areas of your life and give me a rating between zero and 10. And I would have them rate their career and their money. And then I would also ask them to rate health and fitness and significant other and their romance, their friends and family, their community, their spirituality. And so often a lot of the people that I coached were executives or or entrepreneurs and they're like, no, this is not what I want to coach on. I want to coach on my business or my career or making more money. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. We will definitely do that. I promise. One of the ways that we scaled quickly was attending many conferences early on and networking and learning as fast as possible. There's a conference coming up that you need to know about. It's called the Think Multifamily Annual Fire Summit Conference. And it's November 11th and 12th. You can save $100 on this conference by using promo code Whitney100. And if you're tired of paying too much in taxes or want to recession-proof your investment portfolio, you need to consider Think Multifamily's annual fire summit, November 11th and 12th. The Think Multifamily team has over 25 years of experience, done over 100 apartment syndications, 16,000 units purchased in 13 states, and over $1 billion in assets under management. They have the experience that you can trust uh, to help you grow your personal portfolio and avoid those pitfalls that often investors and syndicators fall into. They know you don't have to sacrifice integrity and transparency and servant leadership or your family values. And you're going to feel those things at this event when you attend. Don't forget, thinkmultifamily.com forward slash fire and use promo code Whitney100 to save $100. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. I am so grateful you're back with us again today. I hope you listened to yesterday's show with Rich. Man, he ha he's brought so much value and I I'm excited to have him on again and to do another segment with him. I, I hope that you're sticking around. I would love and appreciate a written rating and review. Please go to iTunes and leave a written rating and review. I would be grateful for five stars and even a critical feedback. We would love that as well. Please go to info at LifeBridge Capital. I would love to hear from you as far as how we can improve the show. What else would you like to hear? Do you have a guest you would like me to interview? Something you would like me to share about our business at LifeBridge? Any of those things, we would love to hear from you. Today, we're jumping back to Rich Fecky. Don't forget, he is the author of The Wise Investor. We're going to jump into more of that today. He has a ton of experience in real estate and business. He's certified as a, a coach, and he, he's going to even coach me a little bit uh, through some of these segments, which you're going to hear. And I, I so enjoyed that. Uh, and so I hope that you will also be coached as Rich is talking and as he's helping you to think through some of these things uh, as you become this holistic investor. I love this philosophy and thought process or way of looking at investing and even what real wealth is, which he's going to share with you. Rich, welcome back to the show. Honored to have you again and get to spend this much time with you. I know it's hard as much as we travel and we're focused on our businesses, all these things, it's rare we get to spend this much time and really get to know you better because I know the listeners are enjoying it. And if they, a listener, if you didn't listen to yesterday's show, I encourage you to go back and where Rich shared a lot more about his story. I know you are going to be so encouraged by him and Kathy and, and how they've built this business, but also the book that he's recently written that I think is going to help so many just changing your mindset, getting into this space and in the real estate and what it can do for you. So Rich, welcome back to the show. Thanks, Whitney. Truly my pleasure, man. You inspire me. Every time I see you speak, I'm always inspired. And so awesome to be here with you. Thank you. Uh, well, let's dive right in. You know, what is real wealth, right? Let's talk about that. Well, you talk about real wealth a lot, but what does that mean? Yeah, I mean, it's the name of our company. And there's a reason behind that, because we see real wealth is more than just money. You know, money's important, absolutely important. But we see real wealth is having the money, but also the freedom to live life on your own terms. So real wealth to us is really being able to do what you want, when you want, with the people you want to be with, who enjoy each moment. It's very holistic. So it's about having that money, but it's also how you live your life. So that's what real wealth is to us. It goes beyond just the money piece. Yeah, love that. And it does feel like, man, you don't have health. It doesn't matter how much money you have, right? So I guess, can you elaborate a little bit or maybe give some examples of what that looks like or how maybe you, you even coach people to think through the real wealth you're, you're talking about? 
Yeah, and it came from several reasons. One is the you know the story I shared before with your listeners around being diagnosed with six months to live twenty years ago, and that was such a wake up call. And thankfully, the doctors diagnosis was wrong and I did survive that melanoma, but it was a real wake up call for me around getting the most out of this life and not waiting for it because you just never know tomorrow could be our last day. So it's like, how are we living today with our family, with our kids, with the world? Are we giving back? Are we, if you went out tomorrow, would you be very happy with who you became and the life you live. And that came not only from that experience of being told that was six months to live, but also coaching clients for 15 years. And I was a certified business and personal coach. And I worked with hundreds of clients and saw that of so many of them were so focused on the business piece, the career piece, the money piece, that sometimes, especially as Americans, we get blinded by that. We get blinded by the success trap and we're trying to make more money. We're trying to go to the next level. Some ego gets woven into it. And so with my coaching clients, I would often say, hey, let, let's just stop for a moment before we dive into this coaching over the next several months. And I want you to assess these areas of your life and give me a rating between zero and 10. And I would have them rate their career and their money. And then I would also ask them to rate health and fitness and significant other and their romance, their friends and family, their community, their spirituality. And so often a lot of the people that I coached were executives or entrepreneurs. And they're like, no, this is not what I want to coach on. I want to coach on my business or my career or making more money. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. We will definitely do that. I promise. And just like you just said, Whitney, if you don't take care of this area called health, you could lose a hundred percent of that, of that money. If you don't take care of this area called significant other and romance, you could lose 50% of those assets if that doesn't work out, right? So, and then there's sometimes you see that all of a sudden their eyes would open up and they'd be like, oh, good point. And it was crazy because when they did rate that, usually it would be almost a higher level of satisfaction in career. It might be like an eight and their finance might be like a six and they might look over at significant other and romance and it's a four or health and fitness would be a three. And so it would just kind of really have them wake up and look down and say, you know, okay, I do need some to set some goals around this area of my life. I need to improve this. And over time, they would always say, thank you. Thank you for pulling this out of me. Thank you for challenging me to step up in this area of my life. They were probably being generous in those scores too, weren't they? Are you right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> Trying to tie it out a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So that's why real wealth is so important to me and to Kathy. That's the way we started our company. We wanted to keep it real and we wanted to really focus on more than just the money piece. We know that, you know, if you don't have enough money, that creates a lot of stress and it has you be a less effective human and not as good of a parent when you have money issues and stresses. We know that. And once you do get to that place of having enough, enough income, and this is scientifically proven, you know, from studies, is like this certain minimum amount of income that we need. And beyond that, more money doesn't make us any happier. So it's be very careful of not getting into the, if I have more money, I'm going to be happier trap. Yeah, it is a trap. I think, I think you say that right. I love how you talk about, you know, how you helped I really opened their eyes, I think, to being mentored in other areas that they needed, that they weren't thought they weren't looking for. Right. And I think back about the role, even my wife played in our business. She's not directly involved in our real estate business, but my goodness, she affects how I operate every day. <laughs> Right. So it's such a, you know, she plays such a big role in our business, even though she's not behind a desk in the office. Right. You know, it's so crucial that relationship. And I appreciate your focus on that and even helping us to open our eyes to other aspects of our business. Cause I think at first, too, I thought I just wanted mentors in real estate, right. Or just in, you know, the business side. And then as I've had such a focus on that, I've had to, you know, step back and say, well, wait a minute, you know, I would like to have some mentors in other areas of my life as well. Right. Good for and, you. Yeah. And, and I've had to think about who those people are. Well, maybe they're not a successful real estate entrepreneur, but however, you know, they are very, they're much further in their walk in their faith than I am, or they're in their marriage or their whatever it may be that I'm looking to grow in as well. Right. And so, yeah. is there any tips on finding different mentors for different aspects of your life? Or is it typically, uh, you know, one or two or one stop shop? How do you advise people on that? I think it's so important. Yeah, it's a, well, we got a bunch of things. <laughs> I'll try to limit my you know, how much I go here. I don't want to bore your, bore your listeners. But there's there's a big thing. I just I have to make a statement just around 
especially real estate investors and people looking for financial freedom. I hear a lot of people and I, I talk to a bunch of people and they are often so focused on that, that they don't realize that to be more successful, they need to work on these other areas of life. Like you said, your faith and your family and all that. They think that if they just read more and go to more masterminds and attend more courses and all that, then that's their ticket. If they just learn how to invest more effectively or how to underwrite deals better or learn how to syndicate better, that's their ticket to success. And all those things are important. But what I've seen is that it's the people who are taking care of their energy. They're taking care of their life. They're more effective. They're more focused. They're more effective when they do work. So it's absolutely vital. I just want to put that out there. It's when we get better, everything around us gets better. So if you want to be more a more successful investor, if you want to create greater wealth, you have to focus on all these different areas of life. Don't do a single-minded focus. So when it comes to mentors or coaches or consultants, I think that's a big one. You know, as a coach, I went through specific coach training through the Coactive Training Institute, the Coaches Training Institute. And that is very Socratic. It's very much about helping the client, as I said before, it's helping the clients find their answers, find their resources. You see clients as creative and resourceful and whole. You don't try to tell them what to do or give them the answers. So that's a coach. I think that having a coach is absolutely vital to really take your life and your business to the next level. I also think a mentor is absolutely vital and mentors. A mentor is different than a coach though. And a lot of people are kind of combining the two terms, but I see a mentor is someone who's been there, done that. They're like, if you do what I've done, you'll get to where I am. And so I think that's key is having mentors in your life. So if it's a real estate focus, you want to find a mentor who's specialized in syndications. If you want to learn single family, you want to have a mentor who has put together a big portfolio of single family properties and it's running passively and it's creating great cash flow. You know, whatever it might be, that I see as a mentor. So it, it's finding that specific niche and saying, okay, I need someone. This is what I learned. This is what I need to learn. This is what I want to do. Who is an expert here? And reaching out to that person, whether it be a paid mentor or a mentor who's just willing to give and help you get to the next level. And there's a lot of those people out there. Well, you know, you get to, I'm sure, you know, look at you. What you know, it's like you get to a certain level, you want to help other people get there too. So there's this giving piece that's built into most good humans that they get to a certain level and they want to mentor, they want to help, and you don't have to pay for it. You just have to show up and do what you say you're going to do. So I think that's it, finding that specific thing and then looking for a mentor there. And then sometimes it's a consultant, you know. So I I wanted to to find those as like a coach, mentor, and a consultant. A consultant maybe hasn't been there, done that like a mentor, but they have specialized their education in one specific area, like say finance. They really know finance. There might be a CFO. They really know how to read a financial statement, analyze it, look at the numbers, all that. Or if say you're wanting to be a, an underwriter, you can get that specific consulting on that, how to do it effectively and correctly, or hire a consultant to come in and help you do it. So I think it's just really important to look at those three different things, a coach, a mentor, or a consultant. Sometimes you can get all three in one, but usually not. Yeah, that's so wise. We could spend another whole show just on that and no doubt about it. But I just love your advice in that and thinking through that as you have done that so well and, and have coached so many also. So jumping back to the book, you know, dive in a little bit as far as the perspective on the like assets and liabilities. I think the mentor has a maybe a different perspective there, or unconventional perspective. What does that look like in the book? Yeah, in the wise investor, the mentor definitely sees things a little bit differently. I guess I would say holistically, no surprise, right? I'm the mentor is kind of like me in the future if I become wiser and in better shape and more experienced and all that. So, you know, Robert Kiyosaki did an amazing job opening people's eyes around liabilities and assets. And he did a great job with Rich Dad Poor Dad. Robert Kiyosaki actually wrote the forward for The Wise Investor, which I'm very honored about. And the mentor takes that to the next level. So he says, an asset is something that provides income or better health or more time or more happiness. And a liability is just the opposite. He sees liabilities as something that costs you income or it costs you health or happiness or time. So it's just a really cool way to compartmentalize 
things into like two different categories, really asset or liability. And so you can look at the people in your life and say, is this person an asset? Are they giving back to me? Am I giving back to them? Are they making my life better or are they a liability? Are they a drain? Are they toxic for some people? Are they costing me happiness? Are they costing me time? Are they not a giver? You know, are they a taker? So that's just one example of asset versus liability. You can also look at the things in your life that you might be buying or purchasing saying, is this truly going to bring me more income? Or is it going to bring me happiness or more time? I mean, so say the time thing, you might say, okay, if I hire a bookkeeper, that's an investment. It's, it could look at that like an expense. But if it's going to bring you more time, which is the thing we can never get back again, right? So a mentor would see that as an asset, hiring someone who's going to help free up your time, someone who's an expert in their chosen area of focus. And that would be investing. And you hear that in business, you know, our people are our greatest assets, right? Our employees are our greatest assets. Absolutely true. Love the whole thought behind liabilities and assets. I look forward to reading the book as well. I'm hoping to get a hard copy when it comes out, but that's incredible. Love that thought. What about, you know, the mentor in the story, I think it explains how wealthy people think, right, compared to poor people. Walk through that a little bit, just the thought process behind that. Yeah, and this is just observations of, you know, the people at Real Wealth, the members that we've helped, you know, people that I've met, conferences and all this. It's like, there's this true difference in the way what wealthy people think and the way they operate and the way poor people think and operate. And when I say poor, I'm not just talking financial. I'm saying it's like that old saying, some people are so poor that all they have is money, right? It's that same type of thing. It's like there's, I live in Malibu, in Malibu, California, there's a lot of money. There's a lot of money, a lot of rich people. And some of the people are stoked and happy and they're giving back and they're making a difference. And some of the people have a lot of money and they're grumpy and they're miserable and they're not living a balanced life. So that's the real big thing is really stepping back and saying, how do wealthy people operate? How do people, wealthy people think? And the mentor goes over some of those things. And you know, one of them is what we were just talking about is wealthy people value their time. So they're always looking at how can I create more freedom of my time so I can be with the people I want to be with and do the things I love. So that's a huge one. So wealthy people are willing to invest money to free up their time and they'll invest time to free up their time to build systems and structures in the business that is actually bringing in you know more passive revenue. So that's one big one. Another big one is that truly wealthy people operate from a place of inspiration instead of envy. Poor people come from a place of envy. They see someone with money and they will come up with reasons why that person shouldn't have the money or how it's not fair and how they probably made that money through some type of manipulation or something. And it's a poor mindset, really it's mindset. And wealthy people that I've seen and have experienced, they see it totally different. They see someone who's accomplished something great and they're like, wow, that's inspiring. I want to do the same thing. How did they do that? How did they get there? You know, and that's why you have people on your show a lot of times to share their stories of how did they get to where they are is because that's wealthy people seek that. They want to learn it. They want to hear it. So I would assume that most listeners of your podcast are will have a wealthy mindset and they're looking, they're not coming from a place of envy. They're looking for inspiration on, okay, if this person did, I'm going to do the same thing. And then I would say that, you know, there's so many different ways that the mentor describes it. But the third I want, I want to share is that wealthy people are focused on more than just creating a job and themselves. They're focused on creating a legacy, making a difference. So they're always looking at how can this money, the bigger I build my investing portfolio or the bigger I build my company, the bigger I grow my income, the more I can give back. And I know that you do that. I know that's a huge value for you at LifeBridge. I know it's a huge value of real wealth. We've given back almost a million dollars now to charity. It's been one of our focus and our targets. And it's something that it rallies our team. When our team knows that we're not doing it just for the income, that we're also making a difference in the bigger and the better that our company does, the more we're able to help Habitat for Humanity and Operation Smile and Mentors International. It's like, but that's the way wealthy people think. They're about making a difference and about giving back. And it just almost this, it snowballs. All of a sudden, and life just gets bigger and better when you start giving back. And it's just, it's cool. It's amazing how much goes back to what we think, right? How we think, what we're telling ourselves. And fortunately or unfortunately, at times, we believe so much of what we tell ourselves, don't we? <laughs> 
(laughs) (laughs) It's so much, right? Yeah. Or we believe what other people are telling us. And so that's why it's the, you know, you become like the five people you hang hang around with the most, right? The old Jim Rohn quote. It's so true. And I've noticed over the years that the people that I'm attracted to and want to hang out and want to spend time with have a certain mindset and it's a wealth mindset. It's a giving back mindset. It's a growth mindset. They want more out of life. They want to grow their business. They want to have an awesome team. They want to have freedom in life. So yeah, how we think is huge. Yeah, wow. What we focus on, we create. Rich, I want to dive into that even more. In the next segment, we're going to jump even more into the right financial mindset. And I want to ask a few more questions about what you were just mentioning as well. But I want the listeners to know, hey, we did a segment yesterday with Rich, and I hope that you will go back and hear his story. You're going to be so encouraged and even some other personal tips that I know you're going to learn a lot from. And then uh, come back tomorrow, and we're going to dive more into the right financial mindset. Rich, tell them again how they can get in touch with you and find your book. Sure. Our company is just realwealth.com. Really simple. And then the book is on all major booksellers, Amazon, Target, Walgreens, all that. And it's on Kindle right now and ebook and also on Audible as an audio book that I narrated. It was a fun challenge with 10 different characters and from men to women to kids. <laughs> so the audio book is out now and the hardcover will be coming out very soon. Just waiting for the printing presses to roll it out. Thank you for being with us again today. I hope you have liked and subscribed to the show. Please tell your friends about the Real Estate Syndication Show, and I hope that you are learning and growing. Don't forget to go to lifebridgecapital.com where you can start investing today.